Welcome to Holland, Michigan. Nestled on the western shores of Michigan, Holland is a thriving city with rich Dutch history. Hello, Huyendak. I'm Colleen Kelly, and this is Family Travel. Welcome to Holland, Michigan. On this family getaway, we discover how traditional wooden shoes are made, explore an ancient windmill, have fun and games at the beach, and enjoy the sights and sounds of downtown Holland. One, All this two, and much more. <laughs> My name is Colleen Kelly, and when I was single, I lived abroad and traveled the world. Then I became a parent and wondered, how would I ever travel again? So I set out to find a new way to travel and get back to exploring the world family style. I'm here to guide you on how to get the most out of your family vacation. Pack your bags and join me, Colleen Kelly. We're going on vacation. Funding provided by... Parents say travel is educational. Kids just think it's fun. It's gotten me up close to dinosaurs, sharks, even real rockets. And that's pretty awesome. Family travel equals family fun. City Pass. At the end of the 19th century, Holland began its long stand as a tourist destination. Known for its Dutch heritage and wooden shoes. Let's kick off our vacation at Nielus Dutch Village. The Dutch Village is a perfect place to get a glimpse into how Holland got its start. The classic American tale of hard work, resilience, and triumph. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Dutch Village. Here at Nielus Dutch Village, visitors can watch as large blocks of wood are carved into shoes. Most wooden shoes are carved from poplar wood, which allow for lightweight use with a smooth texture and creamy color. Hey, guys, how's Hi. it going? Hi. Great. So I suppose you want to hear a little bit about wooden shoes? Oh, yeah, for sure. He's going to start here with this pole knife. And he's just going to work to try to give the shoe a basic outside shape. So now he's going to take his shoes and put them in this vise. And here, he can start to carve out that, that inner cavity where your foot goes in. So first, he's going to start drilling in there to give it some um, pilot holes. And those act as guides for his spoon chisels. So with the spoon chisels, he can just take and start gar gouging out the inside of the shoe. He's going to use larger and larger chisels you know, progressively um, until that inner shape is formed. Now, that, that step of the process doesn't take too long. Is this all done by hand? Yeah, we give you demonstrations on um, how the shoes are handmade, definitely. Now, because everybody has a different shaped foot, you would have to let the carver know everything about your foot before he started so he could customize it for you and your needs. Okay. And he would do that with his next set of tools. These are shaper knives. Now, they're very sharp. They allow them to get inside the shoe and do a lot of custom work. Well, we've got big feet in this family, so. Yeah, good Dutch feet. work a lot. <laughs> Dutch feet, kind yeah, of. Dutch yeah, Dutch feet are usually bigger. Well, now that the carver is done on the inside, he's going to continue working on the outsides of the shoes. Um, you could really tell a lot about a person just by the shoes they were wearing. You know, they would have different styles depending on, on their occupation, what they did for a living, so it would aid them and their work. That's um, interesting. So if you're a doctor, you'd have something that you know, that would represent your profession, definitely. Oh, I didn't know that about those shoes. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Now, it was said that if a man liked a woman and he wanted to marry her, he would hand carve for her a pair of wooden shoes, and he would put his own design on the fronts of them. Now, he'd present them to her. If she accepted them, it meant that they were going to be married, and she would wear them for two weeks before the wedding, and then only bring them out again for special occasions, like anniversaries. Oh, well, you didn't make me some shoes? I didn't make any shoes. I'm sorry. <laughs> you didn't make me any. <laughs> I still said yes, though. So how about we get you guys fitted for wooden shoes? Yeah, yeah. the girls would like that. Well, come on over. We've got sample That's sizes it. here along the floor. Many Hollanders wore these shoes on a daily basis while shopping, farming, and even dancing. Well, the word for wooden shoes in Dutch is actually klompen. So a singular shoe is a klomp. Like clomping, dancing. Like, yeah, klompen dancing is wooden shoe dancing. I think we're ready for that. I think we're ready, ready to get our real well, shoes and go dancing. Well, let's get you some shoes, and then we can get you dancing. Let's break into these new shoes with some Dutch klompen lessons. Klompen is one of the most popular forms of European dance. Dancers tap their wooden shoes on the cobblestone, 
to make different sounds and rhythms. This dance is called Mecha Handen, and that means with your hands. And that's how we're going to start out with three big claps. You guys ready? Clap, clap, clap. Stomp, stomp, stomp. Right foot kick. Left foot kick. Right foot tap, tap, tap. Left foot tap, tap, tap. And turn yourself around. Great job. Clap, clap, clap. Stomp, stomp, stomp. Right foot kick. Left foot kick. Right foot tap, tap, tap. Left foot tap, tap, tap. And turn. After dancing, we stop by the cheese house for a little tasting. Most of the cheeses here are made with cow's milk and aged to perfection. First, some cheese making demonstrations are given and then the tastings begin. So, we're going to start off in the morning with some milk and some cream into our double boiler. Now we're going to stir it all together and let it cook for about two hours until it forms a pudding-like mixture on the top. At this point, we would cut it with our cheese harp put it into a cheesecloth, and then put it into our cheese mold. In the morning, we'll take out the cheese, and it'll be in a nice round ball. At this point, we'll put it into our salt brine here. When we're ready for the aging process to be finished, we'll coat it in a wax. Now we color code our waxes like this, because once you cover it up in a wax, it's almost impossible to tell what kind of cheese is on the inside without opening it back up. All right, do you have any questions? Can we taste some cheese? Yeah, sure. So we're going to head on right over here and get you started on some cheese All tasting. Right. My family sampled Old Amsterdam. Aged for four years, and it's sharp, like Parmesan. They also tasted Herb Gouda, aged for two months, for a softer, milder taste with a variety of herbs. Mmm. Yum. Yeah. What do you think? What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Frank? Should we get the Amsterdam? Yeah. yeah. I like that one. Yeah. Definitely. With my family in agreement, Old Amsterdam wins the vote. There you go. Right, great. Thank you. Thank you. Have a Ready great girls? day. Thanks, you too. All the fun and excitement is included with admission, including taking your goat for a walk. Have you ever been accused of being a witch? Well, step on the scale and get your answer. Would you like to be tested for witchcraft? <laughs> sure she would. <laughs> this is what every woman wants to do, is weigh themselves, right? In front of everybody, right? And may I ask your height? 5'8". Five, 5'8". Eight. Five, eight. Well, there's a whole Ooh, thing very, with that very, system Very, very, very close one. Just barely not a witch. Oh, wow. There. Here we go. Official Dutch Village seal Wow. Next. Certificate of Proof of Innocence of Witchcraft. Yay. Woo! I passed. <laughs> now that we sampled some Dutch traditions, let's check out a true historic gem. Windmill Island is a beautiful oasis on the edge of town, and it represents authentic Dutch history. This 250-year-old Dutch windmill named De Swan is the only authentic Dutch windmill in the United States. It stands 125 feet from the ground to the top blade, each blade weighing 600 pounds. Brought over from the Netherlands in 1964, it was reassembled and placed on display. Visitors can take the tour of the windmill's five floors and see where wheat is grounded to flour. The mill that we have here is for grinding grain, so it has millstones inside it just like this. They're really big. They're about five feet across. These big blades that you see sticking out, that's how we catch the wind to power the windmill. And so some days, wind is from a different direction, and so the windmill has to turn. So this whole part right up here 
will turn into the wind. So it can go this way or that way. Here we are on the second floor. We really are a working windmill and we grind wheat. Want to shake it? That's soft white winter wheat that's grown here in Michigan by West Michigan farmers. And so then we take that wheat and then we grind it into some beautiful whole wheat flour. So we've got in the center, in the eye of the stone, there's some of that wheat that we just looked at. So we're gonna put it in the center and then with a handle, we're gonna turn the millstone to grind some flour. You wanna try yeah. Well, this is a very healthy Old method. method. It is. Too, which is. It great. preserves the entire wheat berry and sends it out as flour. Mm -hmm. Use those muscles. There you go. Good work. Look at that. You Good made that. some. Isn't that nice? Great. After grinding and bagging the wheat, the miller sends the bags down for customers. Windmill Island is a great place to learn and have fun. Let's end the visit with some traditional Dutch games. Why is it left? <laughs> there we go. Ah! What? Ah! what do I do? Take a stick and a hoop. OK. <laughs> Shay, you're doing <laughs> great. Michigan is known for its pristine beaches. One of the easiest and most economical ways to entertain the whole family is to plan a trip to the beach. Plan ahead and pack a picnic lunch to take with you. Towels, kite, shoes. Want to help me set up, Greg? Sure, set up. Can we put our feet in the water? Yeah, go for it. All right, so you know why I brought this? I like bring it. Because you know when the sand gets really hot, this keeps it from going through your blanket, so it's nice and Nice. Good yeah. idea. Hey, girls, come eat lunch. Good, I'm hungry. Pita pockets are a healthy and non-messy way to make sandwiches for the beach. Fruit skewers are also a fun and creative way to keep the sand from touching your food. You want to play some games? Mm -hmm. OK, we'll play some games, and I think there's some more treats in there from our bakery, right? There is, that we picked up earlier. Yeah, let's have some of that. That'll be good. Um, I got the, the treats bakery. from the bakery. Oh, There's the cookies. Yeah, these are famous. Here's the girls' cookies. <laughs> and Dad, oh. Dad's bacon donut. <laughs> <laughs> That's for me. How is it? Pretty good, actually. Pretty good. Can I have a bite? Go. Let's go swimming. After swimming, the whole family decided to play a game that I found on Pinterest. We're making a game. This is called sand tag. So I'm gonna try to get you, but you gotta stay in the lines. Once I get you, you have to stay in the spot that I tagged you, and then you become a block on the lines. Wait, so you stay on the lines too, and you kind of chase after? Yes, I, everybody has to stay in the lines. Oh. Okay, so I'm it for, then you girls can be it. Okay. Kind of like Pac-Man? Yeah, it's like Pac-Man, good. So, who's ready? Me, me. All right, I'm gonna count to three, and then, I'm going to get you. One, two, three. Woo! <laughs> oh, Shay, I'm going to get you. Woo! Oh, oh, my God, you got you. Stay there. Now you have to stay there. Two, three. Break. <laughs> Games and a picnic, the perfect way to spend a day at the beach. Another fun activity nearby is fishing. Purchasing a fishing license is a great way to give back to the local community. OK, sir, this is your Michigan fishing license. It's a one-day license. Okay. It's got your donation on there. This right here is your sports card. Okay. Right now, that's your Michigan ID number forever if you got that sports card. OK, we need some night crawlers, right? Want some night crawlers? Night crawlers? Sure. And whatever else you recommend. I definitely get night crawlers. Big worms, big fish, girls. Yeah. Yeah, do you know what these are? Yeah. yeah. These are night crawlers. Always check to make sure they're alive. Yep, they're doing good. See that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. <laughs> big worm, big fish, yeah. With our live bait and a fishing license in hand, it was time to teach the girls how to hook a worm. OK, girls, we're going to do fishing today. Two types, one with worms and hook, and one with casting. So who wants to do the worms? Me. Shay's doing the worms. I need one night crawler, please. Don't be afraid. They're going in the water. Grab a good one. This one? OK, up and through. There we go. You want a big fish to pull on it. It'll feel like this. Like that. And that's when you yank it up. OK, Donovan. OK. We're going to do some casting. So over here, you go like this, and you let go your finger. Hold on to it. See if it pulls. If it pulls, let us know. Whoa. Boom. I caught one. You caught one. Bring it up. Bring it up. What'd you get? All the way. Oh, my gosh. It's huge. Whoa. You got it's it? It's high. Bring it up. Pull it. Pull it. Whoa, it's a catfish. It. Wow. Look how big it is. Holy cow, where's the pliers? The end of the boardwalk is the perfect spot for any fishing enthusiast. Looking for another family-friendly activity on the lake? How about paddle boarding? We met up with a family visiting the area for a lesson in paddle boarding 101. OK, guys, before we head into the water, we want to talk about a little safety. Safety is definitely important, especially we have a nice breeze out here today. And you know, paddling strong is important, not letting the wind take you to where, uh, where it wants to take you. But um, also, uh, we are on Coast Guard waters. We're on Lake Makatawa here in Holland, Michigan. Which way do you hold your paddle? Does it go with the flat end this way or the flat end this way? The paddle should have the curve away from you. Okay. So if we have the paddle like this. That's the proper way. And, and if I yell at you and say, hey, you're doing it backwards, doesn't mean that you just flip the paddle around <laughs> and do the same thing over, OK? When we carry our boards out, we're going to tilt our board up with the handle here. And we're going to lift right here. After a quick lesson, they hit the water to practice their newly acquired skills. The width and thickness of the board make it easy for anyone to find their center of balance, kind of like riding a bike. Good job, Mom. The best way to start off on the board is on your knees. And when you feel comfortable, slowly make your way to your feet. In order to turn the board without stopping, use the crossbow technique, which continues the movement of the board, and it's a quick way to navigate around obstacles and other paddle boarders. If you're one of the lucky ones that fall into the water, now you might get a little wet. The best way to get on your board is to do it like you're getting out of the pool. Kick your legs and do a push-up onto the side of the board. If there is rough water and it's hard to find your balance, just keep paddling on your knees. You guys have a fun time? Oh, yeah! yeah. All right, let's awesome. go! This was an amazing experience. So much fun. So much fun. It kind of looks difficult when you see people doing it, but once you get out there, you get some good instruction, you can pick it up pretty quickly. My favorite part was probably having everyone fall in the water. Yes. You really have to keep your arms straight or it doesn't work your core. If you bend your arms, it's you're not going to go anywhere. It's great fun. It's uh, something uh, you can do at all age levels and uh, enjoy with your, I enjoyed it with my brother, <laughs> sister-in-law, and nephew and niece. With an afternoon filled with beach fun, let's get back into Holland and explore the downtown. Michigan is the third largest producer of apples in the United States. With over 20 different varieties in Michigan alone, local shops and restaurants make many tasty treats using apples. My husband and kids check out Cranes in the City to see how they incorporate this Michigan favorite into their signature donut. Come on in. I'm going to have you help me make the dough. Shh, don't tell. The secret ingredient is homemade apple cider. After adding flour, the girls mix in cinnamon and nutmeg. When the dough is ready, the girls watch as the mix is placed in the donut hopper. One batch of dough equals 240 donuts. Are you guys ready to eat a donut? Mm -hmm. We are. OK, why don't you grab one of those nice, fresh donuts and try them out. So warm too. 
Would you like to take some home with you? I think, we, I think we better take some home for mom. And boy, were those donuts delicious. Must be those Michigan apples. A local shop that has been in business for 100 years and run by five generations of Fabiano family members, this shop sells homemade peanuts and candies. That's what the store is known for right there, peanuts. Hi. Nice. Hi. How are you? It's called the peanut We're shop. We're great. Hi. Good. Yeah, it's called the peanut shop, right? Our big specialty is our, the fresh roasted nuts. Definitely, we get everything in raw and we cook them here. So we've been doing that for 111 years. I mean, how did this all come about? Well, great-grandpa came from Italy in 1902, and he started a business downtown Holland, and we've been serving downtown Holland since then. Good. May I scoop some up for you? Yeah. Yes, all please. right, yes. let's do it. And you know what I'd like to show you? is an old-fashioned scale that my grandpa had, my father had. Come on with me, I'll sure. show you that. Absolutely, let's go. Who's ready for peanuts? Me. All, all right. right, so here we go. There, it's a little over a half a pound. Let's take a little out. Does anybody know how many ounces that Girl, is? What do you think? 16. 16 is a pound. Very good. And how much is a half a pound? Very good. Eight ounces. There you are. Oh, thank you. No matter what your age, you're bound to find something you'll enjoy. This is what you need to try. Oh, Fabiano Nutty Paddle Pop right here. Oh. This is beautiful <laughs> ice cream, double dipped in chocolate and rolled in fresh nuts that we roast and chop here. Big bite. I'm trying. <laughs> How is it? <laughs> that means it's good. Yeah. Come for the peanuts and stay for your childhood favorites. My grandfather used to give me this too. This is called Gold Rocks. Nugget bubble gum. Do you want some of that? Okay. Okay. All this, this is amazing. This is really cool because I'm seeing things that I used to have when I was little. And then, of course, they're like kids in a candy store. Looking to get creative? Ambrose is a fun shop where you can learn to make your own souvenir. All right, guys, it's going to be time to pick out our T-shirts. So what I want you to do is pick out which color you want and try on what size you want and see which one works best. Ambrose offers workshops and after-school programs to help youth build creativity. The next part of the process is we are going to print the ink onto our T-shirts. You can see anywhere um, on the screen where you can see through, that's where the ink's gonna come through the screen and onto your T-shirt. Come on in here and take a look. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this squeegee and I'm gonna get a bead of ink and I'm gonna keep it at about this angle. This is like a 70 degree angle. Does anyone really good at math? Yeah, yeah, so what you're gonna think of is this is 90, this is zero, you're gonna keep it at 70. So I'm gonna have you reach up here, put one hand here, one hand here. Ready, push down hard, pull back. Beautiful. And then let's look at the final product. Oh, Whoa. very nice. So cool. Good job. Good job. Okay, so let's take this off together. If you wanna pull here, and I'm gonna pull here, set it down on the dryer, and that's what cures the ink onto the T-shirt making it forever on there so you can wear your t-shirt forever. With the girls' shirts in hand, we head over to catch Holland's zany and unique street performers. Amazing town. This is there totally you go. cool. I don't know. We pooped something. You got her? You just oh, did. I think she pooped on you. Yeah, I think it just went in your pocket. <laughs> okay. Wow, 
Wow, we had a great time in Holland, Michigan. From huge windmills and paddleboarding thrills to sweet treats and beach seats, Holland, Michigan is clog clumping fun. Thanks for watching Family Travel. I'm Colleen Kelly. Enjoy making memories on your next family vacation. What do you think? Is that us? That's us. Yeah, it probably is. Funding provided by... Kids think travel's all about fun, but parents know it broadens horizons, introduces kids to new cultures, and makes lasting memories. And that's pretty awesome. Family travel equals family fun. City Pass. For more information on upcoming destinations and projects, visit FamilyTravelCK.com. Follow us on Twitter and find us on Facebook. We'd love to hear from you.